All right, guys, welcome to tutorial number 25. And in this video, we are going to learn about dependency injection. Now to get a better understanding of DI, I've split the video into three parts. The first part, I'm going to explain a bit of code that doesn't make use of DI and mention its drawbacks. In the second part, I'm going to talk about dependency injection as a design pattern and explain how it takes care of the drawbacks. And in the third part, I'll talk about dependency injection as a framework that Angular provides. So let's start with the first part. Let's have a look at some code that doesn't make use of dependency injection. All right, so we have a class car. And for simplicity, let's assume that we just need an engine and few tires to build a car. And the car constructor itself creates its own copies of engines and tires. So the two dependencies, engines and tires, are instantiated within the car constructor. Simple enough, right? But this code has a few problems. Now the first one, let's say that the engine class evolves and its constructor can now accept a parameter. But when we change the engine, our car is broken. So we need to change the code inside the class car to accept a parameter in the engine constructor. And similarly, if we accept a parameter for the tires constructor, we need to go and make a fix again in this car class. So the very first drawback is that our code is not flexible. Any time the dependency changes, we need to change the car class. Now the second drawback is that this code does not really favor testing. Now any time we create a car, we get the same engine and the same tires. So what if we want to test how a car would behave with let's say an old engine or a new engine or maybe different types of tires. Now this is not possible at all. And even if, even if we did create a different engine or maybe different tires, what if they in turn have some dependencies? How do we create those dependencies? So basically we are not in control of our code and this is where our second part of the video that is dependency injection as a design pattern is going to help us. Let's have a look at that. Now basically DI is a coding pattern in which a class receives its dependencies from external sources rather than creating them itself. So let's have a look at the code with DI and understand this definition. Now if you have a look, we have moved the definition of the dependencies from inside the constructor to the parameters of the constructor. So the car class doesn't create the dependencies anymore. It just consumes them. The creation of the dependencies is going to be done externally to this class. And by doing this, both the drawbacks we had previously are solved. So to create a car, we will have something like this. So we have var my engine equals new engine, my tires equals new tires, and my car is going to be new car, and we are just going to pass my engine and my tires as parameters. And if there is a change in the engine constructor, we just add it like this, and even though this definition of the engine changes, the definition of car doesn't change. And the similar scenario with tires, even though we are adding a parameter to the constructor of my tires or tires class, my car still remains the same. So even if we make changes to the dependencies, the car class is not undergoing any fix. Now the same goes with testing as well. Now we are in complete control of the dependency so we can pass in mock data to the constructor to suit our test cases. For example, we can pass old engine and old tires and create an old car because we can do so. And we can pass in new engine and new tires and we can test for a new car. So whatever the data that we are passing, the definition of the car class doesn't change. We can test for multiple scenarios using this approach. So that is about DI as a design pattern. But now we have another problem at hand. So with DI, we create a car by passing the dependencies as parameters. But here's the thing. 
we as the developer need to create those parameters first. So right now we just have two dependencies, so we are fine. But what if the car had, let's say 10 or 20 dependencies? We need to create all those dependencies before passing them as parameters. And what if those dependencies in turn have dependencies on something else? Then we, we first need to create those dependencies. And as the number of class or dependencies grow, it becomes really, really difficult for us to manage the code. For example, have a look here. I have my car again, but this time it has multiple dependencies. My engine, my tires, dependency A, dependency B, and so on until dependency Z. So we need to create all these dependencies ourselves. And if you have a look here, now dependency Z has another dependency on dependency AB. So we first need to create dependency AB and then pass it as a parameter to dependency Z. So this becomes really, really difficult for the developer. And this is where DI as Angular's framework comes into picture. Now Angular's DI framework is like, hey, give me some initial information that I need and I'm gonna manage all the dependencies for you. So if you want a car, just ask for a car. Don't worry about its engines or the tires or any of their dependencies. I'm gonna take care of all that and give you a car. So the DI framework makes a developer's job that much more easier. If I want a car, I just ask for it. I don't have to know how to create a car. I don't have to know if the car is dependent on anything else or if those dependencies are again in turn dependent on something else. That is the power of DI framework in Angular. Now let's see how to make use of DI framework to implement services in Angular. Now there are three steps. The first one is you define the dependency. The second step, you register the dependency with Angular's built-in injector. Now that is nothing but a container of all the created dependencies. And finally, the third step is you just list the dependency in the class that needs it and Angular will inject those dependencies. So three steps, create, register, inject. That is all there is to it. So let's relate this back to our Angular application we have and see how to use the services. Now, the three steps again. The first step here, our dependency is the employee service. So define the employee service class, which is going to provide access to shared data. The second step, register it with Angular's injector. The third step, declare it as a dependency in employee list component and employee detail component. Why? Because they need the employee data and employee service is going to provide, to provide that to them. So employee list and employee detail have a dependency on employee service for their data. So I don't know, pro, uh, pictorially it kind of looks like this. This is the Angular's injector and it has employee service and employee list and employee detail are the components and they go like, hey, I, I have a dependency on employee service. Can you give that to me? And then the injector goes like, sure, man, I can provide it to you. And then it injects employee service and employee service to employee list and employee detail. And one very important thing to keep in mind is that Angular will create only a single instance of the service and inject it to both the components. So employee service will be a single instance provided to both employee list and employee detail. It is called as singleton service. So that is it about DI. And if this video was a bit too much, I recommend you rewatch the video twice or thrice. And I'm pretty sure that you guys will get a good understanding of DI and services. So with this background, let's write some code in the next video to implement this employee service. So thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe.